We kick off your evening sports coverage with Class 6A Division 2 by district playoff action between John Jay and Laredo Alexander. Jay signal caller Jackson Gutierrez, an unstoppable force near the goal line. Great blocking allows the senior to wheel in to the end zone for the Mustangs touchdown. This time Gutierrez takes the snap and gets in for the eight yard score untouched. And John Jay takes care of business, defeating Laredo Alexander 37 to 15. Jay advances while the Bulldogs see their season come to an end. Taking center stage throughout the state today, the high school volleyball postseason. Antonian caps off a remarkable year as TAP 6A state runners up. Today, the Apaches fell in straight sets to Plano Prestonwood in the state title game. Now trying to punch a ticket to the state tournament, Harlan swept Dripping Springs to capture the Region 4 6A championship. Harlan will play Cinco Ranch in the semifinals. Davenport also headed to state with a win in the Region 4 4A final over Wimberley. Davenport will face Selena in the semifinals. Six and three UTSA welcomes four and five Rice to the Alamo Dome this evening for a week 11 clash. A scary moment in the game early. UTSA senior wideout Willie McCoy took a big hit and needed to be carted off the field. We later later here he is OK. It took a while, but the Roadrunners established their rhythm late in the first half as Frank Harris hits Joshua Cephas in the end zone for a nine yard touchdown to lead 10 0. Rice answered right before the intermission on a 27 yard pass play. Eventually, though, UTSA broke this game wide open, making big plays in the second half. And the Roadrunners go on to win 34 to 14, extending their win streak to six games. Texas Tech with Patrick Mahomes in attendance got college football Saturday started with a bang. Taj Brooks ricochets into the end zone for the early Red Raiders lead. The Jayhawks lose their starting QB on this play. Jason Bean gets the first down, but is shaken up after and wouldn't return. So now fast forward to the final drive of the game. It's tied. Baron Morton clutches up for a 33-yard pass, and that sets up Gino Garcia for a game-deciding kick. The 30-yard field goal is good and the Red Raiders upset Kansas 16 to 13. You saw this game here on KSAT 12. It felt like seventh ranked Texas had this one in the bag until TCU scored three touchdowns in the fourth quarter to make it a three point game with three and a half minutes to go in regulation. But of course, the Longhorns able to milk the clock on their final drive, avoiding the upset. UT wins 29 to 26, improving to nine and one overall, and they sit atop the Big 12 standings. Texas A&M took out all of its season long frustrations out on Mississippi State this evening. Aggies QB Jalen Henderson showed zero mercy, leading the way going 11 for 19 for 150 passing yards and two touchdowns. A&M wins 51 to 10 to improve to six and four overall. Now more scores around college football. Big 12 nationally ranked K-State puts up 59 points on Baylor and Sunbelt action. Texas State falls to Coastal Carolina 31 to 23. The Bobcats are six and four now. An incarnate word not in action today. The Cardinals regular season finale was canceled as Northwestern State called off its season following the death of a player in the program. Now let's see how the Trinity Tigers fared early today. Trinity hosting Hendricks for the final game of its regular season. First drive for the Tigers. The handoff goes to Winston Hutchinson. Hutchinson speeds around the right side and gets in for a six yard touchdown run. Then after a Trinity interception, it sets them up in the red zone and the Tigers go to the ground again as legend Grigsby gets through and across the goal line. Trinity dominated this one 56 to 7, finishing the regular season 9 and 1. Now later in the show, we're talking Cowboys, Spurs, and we'll bring you up close and personal to a San Antonio event star studded tennis. Tennis in yes, Alamo tennis. City. We will stay yeah. tuned and stay awake for that. Of course we will. <laughs> All right, well, people were running and walking with a purpose at today's Step for Vets Tower Climb in 5K. Yeah, it was all in an effort to show appreciation for all the veterans here in San Antonio and across our nation. We'll see you on the other side.
A West Side Mexican restaurant was forced to temporarily shut down by the health department last month to deal with a roach infestation. The owner told me this week they've made some changes to keep things clean behind their kitchen door. Campos Los Dos Hermanos, located in the 7200 block of West Military Drive, got a 75 on their October health inspection. A passing score, but they were still forced to shut down due to a roach infestation. The inspector pulling their license after seeing multiple live roaches throughout the kitchen. A manager was caught grabbing a dead roach. That person wasn't wearing gloves and then went on to work in the kitchen without washing their hands. In fact, the inspector noted not a single worker washed their hands during the hour and a half inspection. There were also plenty of flies in the kitchen. A wood table needed to be cleaned, fumigated, or removed to eradicate all of the pest contaminants. The business told to hire pest control services and do a thorough cleaning before being allowed to reopen. I'm Tim Gerber with KSAT 12 News. I do behind the kitchen door. I dropped by this week. I wanted to see if I could ask some questions about your guys' recent inspections. That long time ago. It was last month. Yeah. Owner Sergio Campos said they were only closed for three days. He blamed the pest problem on his former pest control company. We fired the pest control we used to have. He used to come twice a month. Okay. He didn't do the job. Okay. So we got a new pest control is working pretty good. He's hoping customers give them another chance. La Isla Maria is in the 10,000 block of Parent Bidal got a 73 on their October inspection. They had several dead pests floating in a container of water. The ice machine exterior was not in good condition, and they were using a food can to hold up a refrigerator in place of a broken leg. They had to remove slices of pie for sale that were made at the manager's home. Seven of the violations were repeats. They were able to correct 11 violations during the inspection. They were given 10 days to prepare for a reinspection. <laughs> This taqueria, located in the 3700 block of Pleasanton Road, earned a 78, a nine-point drop-off from their previous inspection. They had eggs sitting out that tempted 80 degrees, well above the required 41 or below. They weren't storing meat properly. Workers were touching food with bare hands. The inspector found a paint can stored next to an open bag of flour. They also needed to update their permit. A reinspection was ordered. For Behind the Kitchen Door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. In your consumer news, IKEA is expanding an active recall of mirrors over some safety concerns. More than 22,000 lead and flat mirrors were recalled back in March, and now another 14,000 are being added after IKEA found the mirrors are easily falling from their wall mounts breaking and posing a laceration hazard. The mirrors in question were sold nationwide between December 2019 and this past June. Thankfully, no injuries have been reported yet, but IKEA is asking customers to contact them for replacement parts, or you can return them to the store for a full refund. The mirror is not very visual there in the video. Another recall, this one for children's nightgowns. Thousands of I Moon Z are being recalled over a burn hazard. These were sold exclusively on Amazon between March and June of this year. The products don't meet flammability standards for children's sleepwear. No injuries have been reported, and you can contact the company for a full refund. Major cancer treatment breakthrough is happening right here in San Antonio. How the early stages of this treatment could lead to a revolutionary change in the way people fight cancer. Before we head off into break, Fort Sam Houston welcomed to anyone who wanted to attend this year's Veterans Day ceremony. From everyone here at KSAT 12, we want to thank veterans for their service and commitment to our country. Researchers at UT Health San Antonio are unveiling a potential game changer. Yeah, Jonathan Coto takes us into the labs at the Mays Cancer Center, where research is on the verge of changing the rules and revolutionizing cancer care. The conventional approach for individuals with BRCA1 mutation has often been a mastectomy, a life-altering decision. But here at UT Health San Antonio, a glimmer of hope is on the horizon. Imagine a future where carrying the BRCA1 mutation doesn't automatically mean surgery. UT Health San Antonio is at the forefront of this discovery. 
Researchers are exploring alternatives that could provide a personalized and less invasive approach for patients with mutations in the BRCA1 gene. It is a human tumor suppressor gene responsible for repairing DNA. And so we really are at the beginning of trying to understand what different mutations in BRCA1 uh, mean in terms of, you know, breast and ovarian cancers. Researchers in this lab have discovered the molecular workings of the mutations in BRCA1 that can cause cancers in women. The broader implications are obviously understanding or stratifying patients for therapy our carriers for therapy, uh, understanding whether a particular mutation uh, is bad or not in terms of, you know, a particular patient. Discoveries linking BRCA1 mutations to ovarian and breast cancer are far from new, but no one has been able to make strides at this level of biochemistry until now. Only our lab and also maybe a handful of lab in the whole world can do this protein purification of BRCA1, can do such a study and then so make our unique um, feature. Researchers tell me not all mutations in the BRCA1 gene are bad. Now they'll be able to assess whether mutations that could lead to cancer can be treated in other ways. But if this mutant does not have any problem with the function of BRCA1, then probably we do not need it. So say for some poor patient, uh, kind of over worried the, the mutation. And as research progresses, these doctors say they will learn more about other mutations and their effect on BRCA1. So it's an ongoing process, but the results are uh, that we're beginning to get can be almost immediately applicable in some ways. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Take a live look outside on this Saturday night, 58 degrees, some rain showers out there, a preview of what's to come, Adam Kasky. Yes, you know, we've got a good weather pattern for some rain to develop. That's what I'm liking, some areas of rain that'll be popping up across our area, developing through the morning hours tomorrow, and then especially as we get into the late morning and midday, areas of rain on the way, a few rainy days, cool though. You'll want to curl up on the couch all day tomorrow. It's Sunday. You can do that if you want, if time permits. We'll be in the 50s all day long tomorrow, all day on Monday, and then we do warm back into the 70s by the middle part of the week. So if you don't like this cooler, chillier air, then we'll get back into the mid 70s, which is near average by Wednesday. I'll be back in a little bit to talk about how much rain is likely to fall where, time it out for you, show you the future cast and the drought monitor and how much rain can fall in different parts of the drought stricken areas in just a bit. Was it Adam that just gave us permission to sit on the couch and do nothing yeah, while I'm it trying, rains? I'm sitting over here trying to think how we're going to do the show from home tomorrow. I know. <laughs> Live I, we shot need from the call, couch. We need to call our bosses and say, Adam told us that oh. we could just anchor from home in our yeah, sweatshirt. I'll just stay home. You guys figure it out. <laughs> I, I tell you one thing. That sounds it's, fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very hard to get mototivated tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be off and on light rain and moderate at times. It's going to be cool outside in the 50s. What we have right now on the radar is nothing like what's coming our way. Now this brief light shower is going to make it to downtown uh, within the within an hour. I should say it's going to make it to downtown. This is just one quick splash and dash. Not much to it. Here's a look at our drought monitor. 65% of the state considered in drought. Now I know this is bad for our area, extreme and exceptional, but it's actually a little bit better than just a few weeks ago. Here's the big picture and I want to look at the entire state. You see, we have some areas where we're fine. Uh, just south of us here from about Laredo to Corpus Christi in good shape near Lubbock in good shape. The system's coming in from the southwest and overall rainfall accumulations are uh, looking decent. The highest will be along the Gulf Coast. We could see three to six inches of rain in some parts of the Gulf Coast and even the coastal plain. But I overlaid the rainfall potential from one of our models on top of this. Notice it, it gives us about 1.4 inches. One to two inches, I think, is a really good rule of thumb in and around Bear County and surrounding areas. Yeah, there will be some locations with less and some with more. That's the nature of it. We know how rainfall and precipitation goes around here, but I think the bottom line is the highest accumulations that could overflow a few rain gauges, that'll be closer to the Gulf coastline and not around San Antonio, which is fine because this is the good light soaking rain that just soaks right in. And I think a few days ago really primed our ground for this as well. This isn't going to run off right when it falls. It's going to soak in. The soil is going to be smiling. It's like a sponge. It's going to be good. Look at the rain chances. 70% tomorrow, 70% on Monday. 
Then we dry out and we'll even get into some sunshine thereafter. So here's the big picture already good energy moving into the valley. And one reason why we'll have the highest accumulations from well, roughly the valley northeastward along the Gulf coastline upper level low digging over the Baja Peninsula that puts us in the sweet spot right now for good energy and moisture coming in off the Pacific. So around sunrise tomorrow, a few showers, but they'll become more numerous as the morning progresses and then just off and on throughout the day tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. You'll hear, hear the pitter patter of the rain on the roof and it dripping down the side. Uh, this is that good, good sleeping weather is what this is, especially tomorrow night. But Monday morning, it's going to be hard to get out of bed. And then finally, by Monday evening, it starts to move on out of here and Tuesday morning we will have drying conditions. 59 right now, dew point of 55 tomorrow. We're at 55 in the morning. We'll be in the 50s all day tomorrow, mid to upper 50s. So long sleeves or a light jacket if you're venturing out rain jacket umbrella, of course, upper 50s for most of us tomorrow. Now notice as we get into Monday, the same story. We're going to be in the 50s all day tomorrow, all day in Monday, off and on rain, good old fashioned rainy days. This is what we've been craving after our really sunny, hot and record breaking summer. By Tuesday, we start to clear out. We're at 68. Notice we get back into the 70s, which is average for this time of year. So we've been below average. We'll be back near average by the middle part of the week as the sunshine returns. But notice those mornings remain in the 50s with that fall like feel. So not too humid even when we warm up. That's what we're talking about. I wish you could have seen it. Caskey's doing high kicks. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. One Should of those have done that. One. Crocs is going to go flying across here and <laughs> hit somebody in the head. Good, good thing they're they're soft. Or my pants will tear. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Thanks for being here. <laughs> All right, the young Spurs have a lot of lessons to learn, and boy, are they learning them, Mary. Yes, and with that, they've recently dropped their fourth straight game to the Timberwolves last night, and Devin Vassell says the team won't let zone defense get the best of them next time. And a star-studded tennis event takes over Freeman Coliseum. Venus Williams checking out the college session before she hit the court. USA football team pulled away in the second half to defeat Rice 31 to 14 inside of the Alamo Dome this evening. In the win, quarterback Frank Harris completed 15 of 24 passes for 175 yards and a TD while Rocco Griffin carried the load with Kavorian Barnes out. Griffin racked up 81 yards rushing and a touchdown. Now after the game, head coach Jeff Trailer reflecting on the six game win streak and looking ahead to Harris's final game. This is hard to do, and I'm really proud of our kids, especially when you go through what they did in September, uh, to be written off the way they were. And uh, we've got momentum back right now. Uh, we're, we're somewhat healthy, and uh, you know Frank Harris is playing his last game here Friday, uh, unless something crazy happens. And uh, I really hope everybody shows up to watch that. That will be a very special game. Now, tennis greats assemble in San Antonio this weekend for the inaugural San Antonio International Team Tennis Championships. Day two of the tennis event taking over Freeman Coliseum this evening. Some of the best players in the world were in attendance. And during the UTSA versus Baylor doubles match, Venus Williams came in to watch before getting ready for her own match later this evening. Last night, Devin Vassell and rookie Victor Wembanyama each put up 29 points for the Spurs, but it wasn't enough to keep Minnesota from winning its fifth straight game. San Antonio was the better team to start, but after halftime, the T-Wolves pieced together a 19-5 run that helped Minnesota outscore the Spurs 34-19 in that quarter alone. Now on a four-game losing skid, the 3-6 and six Silver and Black will look to bounce back against Miami tomorrow. When we're playing our best is when we're playing fast. Um, <clears throat> I think in the third quarter they slowed us down with that zone. Um, I think that's really the only reason why we lost that game is because they went on that run in the third quarter. But uh, <sighs> we'll watch film, we'll learn from it. Other teams probably gonna think that you know they they can go zone on us, and you know we'll have something better uh, next game. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm.
All right, tomorrow the Dallas Cowboys will meet undrafted rookie quarterback Tommy DeVito as he prepares to make his first NFL start when the 2-7 and seven Giants visit AT&T Stadium for a 325 kickoff. The third string QB is in for an injured Tyrod Taylor. And if you recall what the Dallas defense did to the now injured Daniel Jones week one, Jones was sacked seven times and hit 12 other in the 40 to nothing route. Dallas is eyeing another spotless game. We got to be consistent. We be consistent through any game. Uh, we can score with anybody. Uh, we got to capitalize on all our third downs, of course. Um, I know that's a stretch, but we can do it. And we got to. We just got to outwill the next the opponent's offense or defense, if you will. We got to be both of those guys. The Cowboys had their fun earlier this season using that same approach against the Giants and Dallas is 16 and a half points favorites entering this matchup. We will be at the game. Instant replay will be the spot to catch up on all of the action tomorrow night. Well, we will see what happens and talk all about it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, Mary's getting her traveling miles down. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Earning those rewards points. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Did we decide that we're going to come to work tomorrow and or are we going to just sit and sweat? I don't sweat? know how you've decided. I'm going to stay home and play <laughs> hooky. Adam Caskey gave me permission. I've already got signed off. All right. I'll be here alone tonight. I hope you join, hope you join us. See, See if I'm here or not. <laughs> Good night.